Hello and welcome to Prioritize Your Digital Marketing to Maximize Results. Today's webinar is sponsored and produced by iCare Pro and hosted by Review of Optometric Business. We have several outstanding presenters today. Evan Engel is Vice President of Sales and Marketing for iCare Pro. He has extensive experience in building community engagement, business development, and marketing to the optometric community. And Dr. Monty Harrell is CEO and founder of Harrell Eye Care Centers with three locations in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Roger, also joining us, V. Pardis, Roger, head of content have... marketing for Eye Care Pro. I'm Roger Mummert, content director for Review of Optometric Business. In the next hour, Evan and Monty will guide us toward mastering the essential tools and strategies that you need to build your digital presence, attract more website visitors, and book no more new patient opportunities. Throughout today's webinar, you can write questions in the chat box on your screen. I will pose those questions for our experts to answer and discuss, and we'll field as many questions as time allows. Limited time and resources. You often hear it said by busy executives and by OD owners who, when you think about it, are also busy executives running a business called an eye care practice. As we will learn in the next hour, you need not be an expert in everything, including social media, to be a successful executive. You do, however, need to access readily available resources and delegate to work smarter, not harder. And now, please welcome Evan Engel and Dr. Monty Harrell. Thank you very much, uh, Roger, for hosting the webinar today, and I'm very excited to uh, to present to the group. Uh, Monty, thank you for uh, Dr. Harrell. Thanks for joining us today as well. Uh, so, whenever, like uh, Roger was saying, whenever we're talking about uh, marketing a practice, one of the key things that we always need to put it into perspective is that a pra that a, a practice owner has a limited amount of time and resources. And so, one of the great things about this webinar is not only are we going to look at some of the strategies and the effect of those strategies, but we're also going to get the um, the uh, experience of Dr. Ha uh, Harrell on how much effort and uh, resources and time it took for him to implement those and his take and experience implementing these different initiatives um, in his practice. Whenever we're discussing uh, trying to drive new patient growth to a practice, one of the most powerful th points of interaction with a potential new patient is going to be the first impression. Often that first impression is going to be uh, your reviews. Reviews are going to be one of the first things that somebody's going to see when they're looking for an eye exam, eye doctor, optometrist in your city, or even if they're looking for a topical search. And so it's probably the most impactful in terms of first impressions are just so important in terms of uh, how they, um, how much they impact the decision-making process of a person. Just think about it like when you meet somebody new for the first time, how they look and how they uh, act in those first few seconds is just going to make such an impact on how you view that person from then onwards and so too with reviews. But one of the main things that a lot of practices ask me is, well, which reviews should I focus on? Is it Facebook reviews or Yelp reviews or Google reviews? Maybe you have reviews on Solution Reach or on ZocDoc. And so uh, this is a really great question because uh, there's a really a clear answer on that uh, question. So looking at Dr. Harrell's practice, uh, this is the month of May in 2019. And just looking at where people are finding him and coming to his website from. And uh, so in the month of May, he had 1,507 visitors to his website from Google search, 154 from Bing, nine people who came from Yelp, and six from Facebook. And while this is specific to his practice, with our 1,650 plus practices that we work with, the same breakdown, more or less, I mean, maybe a little bit higher for Yelp in uh, certain cities, but in general, the same breakdown more or less is going to apply, which is people don't look for eye care on Facebook and Yelp uh, is much further down on a page when they're looking for it. And so Google is the main driver of where people are going to come and interact and decide of uh, whether they wanna schedule an exam. So now that we've basically established that Google is the first and only impression that really matters, we're just going to kind of highlight that a little more, which is that every time somebody's searching for anything from my doctor in my city to uh, a specific topic, 
this is usually what the first thing they're going to see, either whether they're on their phone or on their computer. And that is a map uh, with three local practices listed below that map. And the key here is that if your practice has more reviews and a better average, so 56 reviews and a 4.9 star average versus eight and a four star average or 29 and a three and a half star average, since people really view eye care more as a commodity, uh, having tens of people saying you're a great practice to go to is usually enough for them to make their decision. They're not sitting there opening up 20 different websites to decide who to go to. And so Google reviews, because A, they're the most seen, and B, it's just uh, clearly shows that you're the right practice to go to, are the most impactful in having the, the patient just see this and make their decision from right from this uh, from this area right here. But in addition to Google reviews just being super powerful at convincing a patient that you're the right practice to go to, which is obviously important, Google reviews are also important because they uh, expand the reach of how often you're seen. So one of the things people always ask is, what is SEO, search engine optimization? How do I get Google to, to show me more often? I'm not showing up at the top. Uh, we have to pr pretend for a second that Google is a person. And Google's goal is to show people a business that is the best business for what they're looking for. If they're looking for an eye exam, they want to show them the best practice in the city that is, uh, that is relevant. But Google doesn't know your business. They don't know your competitor's business. So they have very limited information to work from. One of the most powerful ways to communicate to Google that you're the best business in your city is having tens of local people every single month leaving great reviews. And so in addition to your reviews being a really powerful way to convince somebody that you're the best practice, your reviews actually help you be seen much more often because they impact how often Google chooses to show you. So there's really two main benefits and two reasons why if you're going to start with anything, Google reviews are probably the most impactful for you to start with. The whole webinar today, we're going to take a topic, we're going to look at the topic, understand the topic, then we're going to look at the results as it applies to Dr. Harrell's um, own website, and then we're going to have, hear Dr. Harrell talk about his experiences with that marketing initiative. Uh, this particular example is just really uh, incredible. Uh, this is one of his locations, his downtown location, and uh, the Google statistics uh, for his Google listing in May of 2018. May of 2018, he had 1,620 people who found his website which, through discovery, uh, through, I'm sorry, found his Google listing through discovery searches. Discovery searches are really the ones that are indicating a new patient um, potential search. Somebody who's not looking for the doctor's name or the address or uh, the practice name, they're looking for things like eye exam near me or optometrist in my city. So out of those 1,620 um, or 1,700 total, uh, 49 cell phone calls were tracked from his Google listing in the month of May 2018. And during that month, he only had five reviews on his Google listing. In 2019, he increased his reviews over the course of the year from five to 55. But he also worked on some of the other initiatives we're going to discuss, uh, discuss shortly, content and video. But the impact is really just in incredible here. Instead of having 1,600 people who found him, uh, through discovery searches, he had 4,200 people who found him through discovery searches. So 2,600 more people, uh, more local people saw him while looking for things that were not specifically related to his practice address or his name. Uh, that's that's a, a massive increase. But not only that, the actual track calls went up uh, over around 160 more cell phone calls tracked through his Google listing in the exact same month, just the next year. So you can already see the incredible impact of Google reviews and uh, the, some of the other initiatives that we, we did. And this is just one location. Uh, Dr. Harrell is gonna talk now about his, uh, his uh, experience implementing Google reviews and getting the staff by it. Hello everybody, um, thanks for having me. So we were previously using a you know, there's a couple ways to try to get, or there's a lot of ways to get Google reviews, try to get Google reviews. And um, personally, I'm not, I'm not really into incentivizing patients or begging or pleading, but we all also want to kindly ask when we can. We have fans and things like that. But, but uh, the prior service we were doing was automated and we still use that service for a lot of other features. I love it. But as far as the Google reviews, 
it was not really uh, user friendly on on uh, the patient side of things. It took took some effort for them to do it, so we were not getting a good yield. And um, so we've been using the app provided um, through iCare Pro, which actually is a really direct and uh, it's it's a little more hands on for the staff, but over the year, we've been able to build up our views. Um, this was one of our smaller locations. Our main location has, I think, over 100 or more now. But, but still, you know, we, it's uh, it is a little more hands-on. So as far as getting staff buy-in, it is it is one of the things we have to um, quotation manage. Meaning we got to remind folks to do it, and uh, they'll do it for a while, uh, like any human process, and then it kind of slides off, and then. We have to remind them to do it. They're happy. They're glad to do it. It's just uh, one of those things that um, has to you either have to have a focused individual at each location doing it, um, which we we try to do. But even then, the daily tasks sometimes override it. But but uh, as as we've seen, you know, the last few years, and of course everybody knows the whole world's searching. Um, this is how this is the new word of mouth now. It, it shocks me when we have a you know, I have an elderly patient, new patient, uh, a nice, sweet lady, you know, in the chair who's 80 something. And I always ask, how'd you find us? And now that she's saying Google, which blows me away. Um, so it really generationals, you know, some people still use traditional word of mouth, but really uh, I have to agree with Evan in that most folks trust the Google reviews now. Uh, have have you um, have you gotten any feedback from the staff on the impact of Google reviews? Let's see. You know, honestly, I don't I don't know that they uh, may. Uh, no, I, I I don't I haven't asked them to to speak of, but uh, outside of you know, I'm sure on the phone conversations it occurs from time to time when people call us. Um, I would say, you know, everybody kind of gets busy with the job at hand, um, taking care of patients, whatever particular department they're in during the day. So I don't know that they're sitting around thinking about it um, too much. Um, every now and then, though, if, if a specific staff person does get, you know, noticed in a in a review, uh, the, our individual who monitors those always shares that kudos. So that's fun. Um, so, in a sense, in an indirect sense, I guess, is my honest answer. Um, okay. Yep. All right. Um, so, moving on from reviews, we saw that Google reviews are going to be the first thing that a potential patient is going to likely interact with. It's also going to be an easy way to differentiate yourself. It helps you be seen more, and it's a really powerful way to. Uh, showcase that your that the choosing your practice is a good decision uh, there's uh, the second topic that we're talking about is is content on the website and it's really synergistic with google reviews because every time you use a content uh, a topic strategically to find a new angle to to reach a, a potential patient that content is now going to have your google reviews be seen more often as well and so having the great Google reviews means that the additional things we're going to talk about is going to have a better impact in terms of generating uh, new patient appointments. But whenever we're talking about content, um, most practices are relying on the content provided for, for them by the marketing company and, and that they're working with. Um, and the way the content is usually structured is it's, it's created in order to cover the topics that you're talking about. Um, but it's not strategic in terms of uh, identifying what what people are actually looking for, maybe tweaking the word usage to um, be more in line with what people are, are looking for, and then also looking at your competition and seeing what are the topics that they're not talking about. And so content is a great way to just find uh, new angles and new avenues of matching your website with people who are looking for a specific topic. And so iEmergencies is a great example. Most practices will have a page with a lot of bullet points about iEmergencies. They might have a bullet point saying that we uh, do foreign body removal or we uh, um, or uh, corneal abrasions, but that's not really what people are looking for. And so um, the idea would be to 
extend the content into pages about specific topics that really match what people are looking for. So if somebody scratches their eye, they don't know that it's called corneal abrasion. They're going to go to Google. I scratched my eye. What should I do? Should I go to the uh, local emergency room? Should I, um, you know, treatment for scratched eye? Is scratched eye dangerous? Having pages that are strategic in terms of identifying what people actually look for, and then also creating um, subtopic pages on things that your competitors don't really go into depth about is a great way to create a new funnel for new patient growth that doesn't stop in month one it continues over time uh, that's on the services side of things but uh, when you go into a specialty topic that's even more so the case um, for vision therapy most people aren't going to look for vision therapy they're going to look for uh, can lazy eye be treated for adults or i'm dizzy after a concussion or my child squints when they're reading um, and so having pages of content that are more in tune with what people are looking for and and uh, just a, a wider net. Um, um, you're casting like a wider net onto what people are looking for and therefore having new angles and, and ways to pull in patients. And a great example would be, you know, a lot of practices do scleral lenses and uh, no patients know what scleral lenses are. So that's not going to be the way to drive patient growth for scleral lenses. But if somebody has keratoconus, having a great page on keratoconus would be a much better way to generate new patient growth for scleral lenses than having a great page on scleral lenses. And the same would be for all the dystrophies and all the uh, you know, post-RK surgery and all the other subtopics that are relevant. People are going to look for uh, symptoms. They're going to look for diseases. They're going to look for solutions, but they're not necessarily going to look for the names that, you, that a normal practice or the terminology that a practice would look for or would think about using. Um, that's on the content side and, and leveraging content, uh, whether for, for uh, this particular example, we're talking about specialty content, we're talking about general care content. We also worked on what's called location pages so that each particular location has a page that is uh, more targeted to the local neighborhood that they're in. Uh, but we also worked on Spanish content as a way to drive new patient growth. Uh, but with every page that you're working on on the website, one of the key aspects of it is to understand what location you should be targeting. Uh, so while for eye exams, eye doctor, optometrist, you're really limited to the city or neighborhood that you're in, because there's likely three or more practices doing general care optometry um, or talking about those topics in any of the neighboring cities. Whenever you go into a topic, like when we're talking about eye emergencies and it's a little bit more niche, it's a little bit more nuanced and it's, um, probably the only website talking about that topic, then you can start looking to expand based on how far somebody would be willing to travel. Uh, for general care, that might be this tiny city next to you or a few tiny cities next to you. And then for specialty care, people are willing to travel a lot further and there are just far less websites talking about those topics. And so identifying the right locations to target is going to be a key way to make sure that your uh, topics are focused on the one hand to um, a market that is actually relevant, but on the other hand, also extending it out to markets that are potential growth opportunities for you, depending on the topic and how many other practices are talking about it. So uh, Dr. Uh, Harrell is gonna talk about uh, his experiences with uh, content. So yeah, Evan, you, you hit on a lot of the things that you guys um, have done for us in the last uh, couple of years as we've started working together, and, and um, we can't all be experts at everything, as I think everybody kind of knows, and then it's it's uh, can be a little bit of an overwhelming time to to run an optometry business these days if if we don't have great teams, uh, whether they're internal or external, and um, what I've found that. Uh, I've had internal marketing folks and I still have a person who does PR and interacts with a lot of uh, our external marketing folks, but I think it's invaluable to have somebody focused on simply doing the online um, website and marketing strategies, uh, building out the content. And um, I have, I'm, I'm a control freak like every other probably business owner and entrepreneur and everything um, where we want to try to control everything. But uh, it, over time, I've I've uh, been able to let go a little bit, and because um, you have to if you want to keep growing, and you got to have a team to complement your your weaknesses, 
and so this has been a, a great relationship for for me as you guys built out specific content I always get a chance to review it or edit it but I rarely do to be honest because um, I just move on and it, it is fairly congruent with how we'd want to say things and 80% good and moving on is probably better than me spending another hour trying to make it 100% good where it really doesn't matter um, honestly because if it's 80% good or how I would say it and it's uh, technically correct then it's going to achieve our goal which is uh, as you stated you know the keratoconic uh, content in our site is driving we've, we've seen tremendous growth in our scleral um, fittings and we have folks driving, like you said, they'll drive for specialty care. So we've had folks drive two and three hours to come get a, a specialty fitting. And uh, those are a lot of fun, of course, to help those folks as well as good revenue for the for the business. And um, and so we've we've had to expand our clinical time allocated for scleral fits. Um, it's also done the same same thing for vision therapy and some of the other specialty niches we provide. Um, we have a dry eye pretty proactive dry eye clinic going now with uh, in-office treatments and things like that and uh, again that's a that's a niche that folks will drive for because um, they, they want it and they're loyal patients and so in, in addition to just our great primary eye care growth um, and awareness in our direct marketplace it's been neat to see how the content is driving more of our specialties. Um, that's great. I had a question, uh, which was uh, just to maybe go and explain a drop more about location targeting. Um, so I'm just going to uh, hold on. Just going to go back here for a second. <clears throat> so when we're talking about location targeting, the idea is that uh, Google does not intuitively know uh, necessarily what city that page is related to or where. Or, or basically you can help Google along in, in identifying where you want this page to show up in. Um, and so th it, it really comes down to uh, including the, the cities that you want to list on that page, uh, not only once, but a few times, making sure that they're showing up not only on the page, but also in uh, what are called like headers or title tags within the page, which basically give Google a stronger indication of what it's about. Um, and so on every page, you want to identify what's the potential reach, how far somebody would be willing to travel, and perhaps most importantly, what the competition landscape looks like. So if you're competing against 10 other practices who have a comparable page, that's not going to be uh, leverageable to expand out um, to another city, let's say. But if you're talking about um, Fuchs dystrophy as it relates to scleral lenses, uh, virtually no one has a page on it or anything about it, and so therefore you can then go ahead and target a couple of cities around you that are that would be considered like much much further away, basically reaching out to other cities and areas. Um, that's really really the the main gist of location targeting. So it's not necessarily too hard to implement it on a website. The harder part is really strategizing and identifying where the opportunities lie with that content and how far somebody would be willing to travel and what the competition is uh, in relation to that topic. Now we've discussed Google reviews, the impact there, how content is really synergistic in that it drives people to see your Google reviews more often because you're just touching on so many other topics that without that content, you would not be touching on. Um, the next step or evolution with the website is, is video. And the primary reason why video is the next step is because the most powerful uh, way to engage a patient is the doctor-patient relationship. Uh, really that's the sale or whatever you're talking about. That's what people want to look at. That's why they choose to practice. The second most visited page on all of our websites is the doctor's um, bio page. People want to get an experience of who you are, your expertise for general care, uh, of course, but for specialty care, even more so if I have keratoconus, I want to know that this doctor has experience helping me, that they have the technology, that they have the passion, authenticity. Uh, Normally, that's only reserved to when they come into your lane. Uh, but with video and the ability to really just shoot video easily and quickly at a practice, you can now extend that reach outside of just being in your lane and take it to many other areas. Um, so video is probably one of the most leverageable 
uh, aspects of, uh, of marketing, and it's one of the most impactful aspects of, of marketing and practice. So I'm going to pose a question to everybody. I think you might have posed this question once or twice. Uh, which one's better, one or two? <laughs> so one is a uh, video of uh, uh, Dr. Monty talking about his uh, experience helping patients with, uh, with uh, uh, vision loss from uh, traumatic brain injury and, um, and his ability to help them uh, with uh, neuro, optom neuro, neuro optometric rehabilitation. And it's engaging. You get to experience the doctor, see his passion, he's talking about it. It's only a one minute and 22 second video, but it's definitely going to be uh, far more engaging. This is another practice within the same city that is uh, has also content on the same topic. However, it's really just a bunch of bullet points and a little picture. And so what's better, one or two? Would you prefer to, to engage with a video or would you prefer to engage with um, a bunch of bullet points? And uh, the stats really back it up that people don't want to engage, that, that people really want to engage in a video uh, because it's just much more, it's much more impactful. You get way more information from a video. And so, uh, that's really kind of uh, just highlighting and showcasing what video or what the goal of video is. The goal of video is not to have one amazing practice video that you put on your homepage. The goal of video is that on every interaction, any search that somebody's looking for, any page that they're coming to, you're right there at the top and talking about that topic and, and having a genuine um, and authentic uh, interaction with the patient that's just much more personal, much more... Um, uh, impactful. But in terms of leveraging the limited resources and time of a practice to its max, video is also really, really great in that regard. A video that, let's say, uh, takes one minute to shoot or two minutes to shoot on a cell phone um, can then be used uh, on the Facebook page of the practice, on your Google listing, on your YouTube. YouTube is actually the second most used search engine in the world. Uh, it can be used on uh, your website itself and uh, transcribed into content to be used as a blog. And so two minutes, let's say, for a one minute video that the, that the doctor or optician shot can now be used in multiple places in multiple ways and uh, achieve really the maximum results. Um, whenever you talk about video, I think it's key to understand just why video is so impactful and important for taking your marketing online. Uh, to, to the next step. So the first thing is engagement. Um, people retain 10% of information that they read versus 95% of information that they see in a video. Uh, not to mention that in a video, a lot of the information that they're getting is, non, uh, is not able to be uh, given over in text. You can't give over the passion, you can't give over the enthusiasm, you can't even give over the expertise. Um, so video is just far more engaging but uh, because people are remembering it, that's a really key consideration because a lot of the topics you're talking about is something that you want them to internalize. If you have a video about blue light protection or a video about um, the importance of uh, a REDS2 vitamins for uh, someone who has AMD, or you have a video about the importance of uh, getting your kid checked out for uh, developmental vision, uh, no matter what that topic is, you want them to internalize it because it's actually something that is important for them to internalize. And so in terms of engagement, video is going to be far more engaging, far more memorable, far more impactful. Uh, but not only that, uh, video is also uh, increases and uh, the awareness of the topic you're talking about. Uh, so first of all, like we said before, video is going to be used on Facebook, on your YouTube channel, on your Google listing. So it just expands the amount of places where you can be seen and that topic can be covered. Uh, but also going back to Google and Google's whole uh, process is to identify a website that people would, would find to be the best resource on the topic or the best business on that topic. Since Google knows that people want to interact with video far more than they want to interact with text, Google is 53 times more likely to show a website at the top of, or a landing page on the top of their search um, if it has a video versus if it does not. And so in terms of just being seen more often and, get, and creating more angles of awareness, uh, video uh, definitely online is, is hugely impactful in that regard. And then even offline, uh, video can be a very uh, good tool to be used to increase awareness. So if you have a video talking about the dangers of medium and high myopia, 
you can send that as a follow-up to parents who scheduled their kids for an eye exam and found out the kids are myopic. Or if you have a video about um, the importance of uh, blue light and UV protection, that can be something that can be shown in the office or before somebody comes in. And so videos can increase awareness not only online, but even can be leveraged in the office or as follow-up or as education before the patient even gets into the lane. And then ultimately, everything that we've discussed today, whether it's the Google reviews, whether it's the written content on general care, whether it's the written content on specialty care, the location targeting, and now video, the, the goal of everything here is to get that patient to uh, schedule an appointment. And so as we- Evan. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Tzvi here. I, uh, I work with Evan closely and uh, I just got a great question uh, by email from uh, someone. And uh, the question is about HIPAA laws and video content. So I'll just quickly speak to that. Um, you t if, if a patient is ever involved in a video, a picture, you're, you're ever using them, um, you know, to recount their experiences for any kind of purpose, uh, you absolutely need to be very careful with HIPAA compliance. And in this case, you would get them to sign a release uh, to use their their image or video to that uh, to that end. Uh, and that's something we regularly share with our clients. So that's a great question. And as uh, Evan uh, will continue in a second, I just for those using the app to log in. Uh, I'm not sure about the on the desk, you know, I'm not sure about the browser app, but if, if, if you downloaded the app, you can all ask questions via the chat uh, and we'll try to answer those uh, either as they come up or uh, at the end. And we'll certainly open it up to more questions at the end. And back to you, Evan. <laughs> Thank you, Tzvi. Um, so so um, uh, uh, getting back into the conversation, so first of all, I definitely think that patient videos uh, are also extremely important, and especially when you're talking about uh, specialty care and the ability, like for, if you have parents talking about the impact of vision therapy or uh, you have somebody talking about how scleral lenses have radically changed their life um, are just super powerful. And of course, you always wanna be mindful of HIPAA compliance. So thank you for, that was a great question. Uh, so just getting back here, so videos are super engaging. They're going to make sure that your that whoever's looking at the video is going to just get far more information and also remember it. It's going to expand your awareness to many different platforms as well as just be usable online and offline and cause Google to favor your page because of the video on it. Um, but ultimately, everything comes down to does this have an impact on a person scheduling appointments? Because you can have thousands of people come to your website and if none of them schedule, so then all of this is a mute point. And so uh, the statistics overall, not optometry focused, but the statistics overall is that a page with video will have 80% more conversions, meaning more actions to schedule an appointment or make a phone call, uh, which is pretty significant if <laughs> if that's our goal. Um, and, it, and it really, it, I think it's intuitive. It's that if everybody's going to look at the doctor and if, the, if everyone agrees that a video is far more um, authentic and, and impactful to the patient, so then it follows that they're gonna be more likely to go ahead and schedule once they see a video on the page and they interact with you. Um, so uh, now we're gonna pass it over to uh, Dr. Har uh, Harrell to talk about his experiences with uh, video, how hard it was to implement, what kind of setup he has, um, and just any impressions on it. And we all know that getting getting uh, yourself to make that first video is always hard. So it's great to hear it from uh, another doctor. Yeah, so when um, we started, Svi is my marketing uh, consultant and uh, was encouraging us to begin video and video. And I said, ah, it's kind of a pain. And really it's not. And uh, I, will, I will mention along uh, Evan's presentation there. The one thing that really made me slow down and go ahead and cause and start doing some videos was the fact that uh, when he mentioned Google owns YouTube, and by the way, that's going to affect some in some magical uh, internet way. It affects Google ratings, obviously. Then uh, I was unaware of that fact at that point, and um, of course, that really resonated from a marketing and business perspective. So I thought, okay, I, I see, I see why we really need to get going on some video and. Um, I have, a, like I said, an individual in my office who helps me um, stay on task with PR and marketing stuff. And, and um, so you could do it 
by yourself pretty easily with a remote, but she she basically sets up her uh, our my phone or her phone, and uh, we do have a little tripod now. But originally, you know, you can do it. The, the authenticity of doing a video on the fly without a bunch of fancy equipment, I think, appeals to people. And um, but the tripod will help it be more steady, and it's easy and in, inexpensive nowadays to do that. And um, it might take you a few cuts to get get a suitable um, one to three minute video ready. But again, I think with the with the mentality of okay, I said it like I would say it in the exam chair, and that's me, and that's as good as it's going to get, and let's move on. You know, so if you're providing good value and information to your current and and future potential patients. Um, if you're t talking like you would in the exam chair, then it comes across authentically and um, in a cheesy way, it's kind of been fun to do. And uh, we're getting the other doctors involved now too, because I don't want to just have me all the time, but uh, we'll get the rest of our group involved and they can talk about things that they are passionate about. So starting to do that soon. That, that's, uh, that's great. And uh, one of the things that, um that we we always talk to is that the ultimate goal is that every topic every page on your site should have a video and so keeping the videos nice and short and keeping them uh similar to what you're used to answering in your lane um is really a, a great way to set it up so it makes it much easier because uh you're used to answering questions every day and answering them in a minute and therefore, it's not something you have to, you know, spend a lot of time kind of scripting out and thinking about because uh, ultimately you've done it a hundred times before, and it's just about being comfortable in front of a camera. Um, and as uh, as we heard a second ago, um, when it comes to the equipment you need and the technology and and what do you really need to get started, uh, a, f a cell phone nowadays has better video quality than a professional videographer would have. 15 years ago that might have cost $50,000. So it's really important to not think that you need anything fancy. Uh, having a video that that highlights what you want in an authentic way, as long as the audio is good and the lighting is good and it doesn't look you know, too too poor, but uh, it's, it's a really impactful way to leverage the doctor's time, but also even the optician's time um, to the maximum effect. Okay, so now that we've really discussed the three kind of major growth strategies um, that we we implemented here, uh, it's really important to put it into perspective of well, what was what did that achieve? You know, we talked about content, and we spent a lot of time doing content or on on uh, uh, the website here. We we talked about video, we talked about Google reviews, and all of them are great ideas. But when you can actually put it into the perspective of what did it achieve? Um, it, it's a uh, it's a great takeaway, and so we're looking at um, the statistics of May 2018 versus May 2019. So, first of all, when we come to the Google listing and Google reviews, uh, we're only tracking three locations, even though there was a new location added uh, over the course of the year, just because we don't have something to compare. So we're going to look at three of the locations. Um, so. In those three locations, there were 234 more five-star reviews added to um, on Google over the course of the year, and the impact was that he had uh, that they had on those three locations in the same month in May of 2019 versus 2018. He had 358 more cell phone calls from the Google listing tracked in one month. So right off the bat, that's a pretty impressive number: 358 more people calling just off of. Uh, the Google listing without even taking into account the website and everything like that, um, and that's for three locations. Um, the impact of content. So uh, we, there are a couple of different ways we use content on his site. Uh, one of the ways we focus content was making location pages and really identifying that each location should be strengthened by having a page that is essentially a overview of the whole website, but targeted to a specific area that that location is. Um, and in May of 2019, the location pages had 402 more people coming to them versus May of 2018, where the location pages were, were much more underdeveloped. Um, so that's a pretty significant amount of people coming to each location. Um, that's for three locations again. And then 
um, on the content side, on the topical content side, from eye emergency content to Spanish content to optical content that we're working on, uh, he had 156 more people who came to those pages um, in May of 2019 versus May of 2018. And so uh, that's a pretty verifiable and uh, important impact because this is only within one month. So once you expand that out over a course of a year, you're talking about thousands and thousands more people being reached and thousands and thousands more phone calls being made to the practices. Ultimately, appointments is uh, extremely important when we're looking at the effect of anything that we're doing. And um, in May of 2019, there were 402 more clicks to schedule an appointment versus May of 2018. That's for three locations again. Um, 402 more clicks is, is, is a ton. <laughs> and it's a really a testament to, to the combined work of um, Dr. Harrell and, and Svi in terms of uh, strategizing different ways to really have an impact on, on growth. Um, so that was 402 um, more uh, new um, clicks to the new patients scheduled. Um, and 156 is, uh, I have zero idea why there's 156 there. So <laughs> we'll just uh, leave that. But uh, it was meant to be plus nine. Uh, there were uh, in the month of May 2019, there were uh, nine more uh, specialty appointments that were verified and tracked through the website versus 2018. Um, and so while some of them might not have come through the website, that's uh, still a pretty impactful amount of uh, new patient growth that happened on the website, on the Google listing, uh, based on these three initiatives that we discussed. Um, uh, doctor, uh, if you want to just chime in and say, have you felt any impact of, uh, of the initiatives? Have you uh, any thoughts on on just uh, how it's impacted the practice? Sure. Uh, yeah, I think you know. For we all know we need to be doing marketing online, and everybody knows that's that's the way it's going now. The I've been. I felt like I was focused on it for the last five to seven years, and um, in some ways we were, and we were doing okay. Uh, but there's little, it's one of those little things that changes sometimes, um, and that really makes a big impact. So yeah, we've definitely felt it. Um, we've we've grown, of course, this year, as you can see the numbers, and that's reflected in our uh, our exams and revenue as well, and um, the niche. The niche businesses I mentioned a while ago, where we're doing vision therapy and sclerals, and uh, our dry eye center um, really is, has been impacted with online uh, aspects in addition to the primary care. And then you commented on the Spanish, and I failed to do that a while ago, but the, uh, the downtown location um, does primarily serve uh, the Hispanic community there in, in our area. And, um, and so the Spanish content has it really has reached a lot more folks there where we're, we're seeing good growth there on the numbers and um, kind of, uh, yeah, it's it's helped our growth there with all the custom content. And so I guess all that to say, uh, put in a little plug, but um, really Savi has been an excellent partner and for us and um, guiding us through all the topics you, you've been hitting on. And um, I feel like we're finally doing well online marketing we were doing okay but now we're uh, i think in a, in a more dominant position or a position to where we can can at least be out there and um get get our future patients to know about us and and continue taking care of our current ones uh, dr harrow it's uh, roger mummer jumping in here can you hear me yes sir Okay, on the uh, one question about uh, content, and it came up a little earlier, and that is the subject of eye emergencies, uh, when someone's got an infection, a foreign body, and so forth. Um, from a content point of view, how do you communicate that, either through your website or your, your reviews, because it seems like a, a challenge area for optometrists to let their patients know that the optometrist is the first person to call in that case of an, an eye emergency. Um, and secondly, there's an opportunity for a very uh, grateful patient to uh, provide a testimonial in that sense. Yeah, great, great thought. And um, this this might scare some people, but we, we have it posted on our, our inbound. We have our list of services as well as our uh, little 
practice brochure that's in all the exam lanes and at the front desk that people can pick up uh, right on the front of it at the bottom says we offer 24 7 emergency care so internal marketing and then combined with um, we have had some calls throughout the year for after hours care um, due to the Google search and the content on our site and um, it it's not a burden like it it's a little scary to do that for me originally and because uh, I, I end up taking most of the call just because I don't like juggling it around and unless I'm out of town but it's it's not a burden it ends up being you know two a month or something or for for a, four combined clinics and uh, but yet but it makes that awareness so we get a lot of during the hours of calls and we're doing several red eyes you know a day and um, those are fun to take care of you know and we, we also the other thing we do that's old school not internet based um, and let's say Google and find us is we do send out at least once a year to all the uh, urgent care centers in the area that uh, if you have something walk in ocular related we're we're happy to take those same day so Excellent. And has that led to any, say, video uh, testimonials uh, that you've been able to use with a, a patient that you did treat for an emergency? Well, it could have, probably if I'd asked for a video. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I, fail, I failed to harvest the testimonies. That's actually something uh, Zvi's been on me about, is harvesting, uh, act asking for more video testimonials uh, in all aspects of our business the dry eye and vision therapy as well. But um, that's something we have room for improvement on. Hey, great opportunity. Maybe there's mm -hmm. a thought, Svi, you could jump in here. When it comes to uh, the videos, uh, the common question comes up, how long is optimal? How long should a video be to hold interest? What are the elements of, uh, of a brief video? Uh, it's a, that's a great question. So. When it comes to video, uh, there's two kind of tensions here. Um, you're really fighting people's attention spans, and you're also wanting to use an optimal length that Google likes. Um, and that's a bit at odds because uh, Google is a slightly more likely to prioritize a longer video in that um, they can put more ads into a longer video. Um, but that really shouldn't be your main concern. The effect of the video is primarily engagement with whatever SEO boost we can get out of it. And there, I, you know, what we generally suggest is, is a minute to a minute and a half is optimal. You go up to two minutes, that's fine, because uh, that's sort of the sweet spot for the amount to which people are paying attention and engaging with the video. And that's really what's the most important thing in terms of our goals with, the, with these videos. Yeah, excellent. Uh, we do uh, a lot of videos at Review of Optometric Business, and you're absolutely right that the phone now has become a central instrument as opposed to some of the more expensive equipment I've used in years past. Um, I would, however, recommend that you spend $19.95 and get a little phone tripod at your local camera shop. That makes a, an, a, an amazing difference if you could pl uh, just place the, uh, the camera in a, in a still position and it improves quality a great deal. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's uh, what we suggest to every one of our clients uh, at whatever level that uh, we always encourage them to make video. And we always say, you know, a $20, $25 tripod is, is your ticket. Um, here's another question concerning, um, I guess, the um, what you might call geo-targeting of your message. Dr. Harold, you uh, specialize in scleral contact lenses and uh, specialty contact lenses. So um, is the need there to draw from a, a wider um, uh, area uh, than you might if you were just trying to attract uh, patients for uh, your ordinary comprehensive eye exam? And how does that geo, um, geographic area uh, differ um, in terms of a rural versus urban area? Or, uh, Dr. Harrell, you're in, in the West or uh, in the Prairie States, and people might drive, you say, three hours to come to you versus somebody who lives in an urban area. So the question, I guess, for Svi and, and others is, is how wide should you throw your net in terms of trying to attract patients for specialty services? Evan, you want to take this one, or should I jump sure. in? Sure. No, I can. Um, so I, I think that when it, so one of the great things about specialty care is that it 
it's really about the the competition and how many people are talking about that subject. And when you're talking about general care, every practice is now your competitor and you're just limited in terms of how far you can reach. When you're talking about specialty care, uh, there's virtually no uh, competition. And so you're really just limited by how far somebody would be willing to travel. Um, and so like I gave the example of Fuchs dystrophy or all the other subtopics of uh, that would, you know, conditions and, and dystrophies and, and uh, post-surgery complications and those kinds of things, as long as you're the only one talking about it, you're not really limited online uh, geographically, but you are limited by how far someone will talk, uh, be willing to travel. But also, um, so, so that's one consideration, whether you're rural, whether you're urban, it's just about what's the competition landscape like? If you have three other practices or four other practices talking about it, so then you're going to be limited to um, places where there aren't people talking about it, there aren't practices talking about it online. But more importantly is that if somebody has keratoconus or uh, they really need scleral lenses, they're really looking for somebody who can help them. And so it's not only about just having a page there, but it's about communicating it through video and, uh, and through patient testimonials, that this is an area of expertise. And if, if I have you know, difficulty driving because of my keratoconus and I'm really being impacted in my life negatively by, by uh, comfort and vision issues, and I come to a website where I just get the impression that this uh, doctor really has the experience and has helped many, many patients just like me. So that is a very big pool to say, I'm willing to drive and travel. And I've had practices that get patients from all over the world just because they have a, a great video on a topic that nobody else talks about. Um, so I think those are the main two considerations. One is just looking at uh, who's talking about it and what the, you know, what, the, what the potential traveling distance is, and then also looking at if the more you position yourself as the expert on the topic, the more likely somebody will be willing to travel. And then, yeah. uh, oh, sorry, Roger, go ahead. Yeah, you also talked about the how of talking about it, and that is to use lay terms that the um, that the, the patient might be searching for. People don't know from keratoconus or scleral lenses and, and eye conditions, but is it important to use those lay terms? And Dr. Harrell, has that changed in any way how you also present eye conditions to the patients when you see them in person? You bet, yeah, and uh, I think that's, you know, I'm about 20 years in, so all of us with experience gradually get better at the communication, hopefully. And um, that's what that's the challenge when we when the younger doctors first get out of school and we use all the technical jargon and we really talk way too much to our patients and overwhelm them and confuse them. And um, but yeah, over time we we find ways to say things in a way that resonates, or so hopefully we get best compliance and understanding from our patients. And uh, so yeah, it's the same communication techniques um, when we're doing the videos and uh, trying to educate the public. And gets back to to the marketing rule of what is it, uh, you, you marketing guys? Uh, we got we keep it down at the eighth grade level in our communications and written form so that we so that we reach the masses hopefully uh, some decent understanding and same thing goes with the eye technical terms we have to find a way to say it in a way that uh, I think Evan mentioned it earlier but patients don't really care about the fancy names they, they care about whether we can fix their symptoms so if we we need to speak in terms of how we're going to make them feel better see better uh, etc and then then they're gonna then they're gonna listen to us hopefully yeah uh, I have a great question that's come in. Actually, we have a couple of great questions about reviews that I think we should jump uh, back to in a second, but about location targeting, um, Evan, I think this one is for you. Uh, we are located in the tri-state area. How do we use location targeting to draw the patients from the other states to our practice? And it's a bit of a, a loaded question because you know there is a big difference between uh, general care and any kind of specializations you might offer. So Evan, why don't you uh, jump into that one? Sure. Uh, so the, the first thing is to really just identify um, where you can talk, what topics can you talk about that other people aren't talking about. You're going to have a hard time reaching other states and other cities unless uh, you're really limiting your competition. And uh, so that's really key. And just, you know, whether you want to, if you're a very optical focused practice and you want to start going a little bit deeper um, into the frame lines and, and, and different optical topics or whether you're specialized with uh, different 
uh, aspects of your medical care, uh, the idea is to identify things that uh, your competition is really largely just left off their website or off their online presence. So uh, the great example with scleral lenses would be, uh, you know, quad cone dystrophy and shortens and Fuchs dystrophy and uh, map dot dystrophy and post RK surgery complications and all of those topics that virtually no optometrists even talk about, let alone have fully developed pages and use those. Each of those is, a, is an avenue to start expanding out to harder to reach or additional locations. And then you don't want to put on too many locations because that will kind of uh, be a little bit of a, a negative practice in regards to Google, but you want to choose strategically, let's say the four biggest um, populations that fit your demographics that you can reach with those topics. If you're a practice that doesn't specialize, it's a little more tricky, but um, ultimately in order to reach a further away, you need to be talking about things where you just don't have a competitive landscape. Perfect. And uh, I'll just uh, throw in there that when you're talking, when, when Evan's talking about location targeting, he means in the content itself, if that's not clear, um, that you offer these services to the following areas. And by mentioning um, the service in, in general proximity to a location that triggers that signal to Google, uh, if that wasn't clear. Uh, Evan, we have a couple of questions that are separate but related about um, about reviews. And I actually think I'd like, uh, I think one would be great for, um, for Dr. Uh, Harrell to answer. And the, the first one is, uh, what are some ways to get staff to encourage patients to leave reviews? And the second interrated, you know, related question um, from another participant is what is the best way to ask for a Google review? So um, <laughs> Dr. Harrell, you're, you're using um, a review app. I am um, maybe say a little bit about how it works and, and how you've, the challenges and, and how you've sort of overcome them working with staff to be effective at, at, at making the ask. Yeah, I think that this is a great question. And it's kind of the magic, magic question is, you know, we all have wonderful staff and like like us, they are human and um, we'll only, you know, do do so well at certain things. So um, that first on the patient side, you know, when, when we do have a, a good experience going, which happens every single day in all of our clinics, um, I'm not great at it, to be honest, but but when you've seen a patient forever and um, or, or even a year or two and you have a good rapport, um, most patients are going to be happy to do so if, if we cue them up. And again, I'm not going to claim we are doing great at this because we're not. But um, if, if we were casually mentioned, you know, we're trying to build up our Google reviews. I've seen you a long time. If you're going to receive a, a text after your exam and I'd sure, you know, if you have a few seconds to go ahead and activate that, we'd really appreciate it that would greatly increase our numbers. And um, as I'm saying it, maybe maybe we need to get on that. Um, so organically through the growth you guys that you were showing just in this last year uh, was because of the app we're using that, that you guys provided us uh, because it is, it, it's pretty simple to use. There's a little bit of human, you know, they have to put it in and send it but it's pretty t uh, quick to do. And so at the end of every day, we have one person in each location or throughout the day to send those out. And um, that's where we got all of our Google reviews this year um, because when, on the receiving side, it's so e elegantly simple and um, does not take the patient long to leave a, a star rating. And then it's easy for them to comment if they'd like. So that simple little tool uh, has really really been great and that's that's where all the growth in our Google reviews came from and I, I don't know what multiple we would get if we actually uh, successfully casually ask our patients like I was mentioning but but I think I'm going to add that to our next uh, meeting for our doctors to kind of to kind of do that and I think it'd be most effective from the doctor and you know you have those patients you know that would be glad to do it if we just just kind of mention it um, I my personal opinion um, and, and I don't think it's right or wrong but uh, I don't want to get into, you know, I think some some clinics give out gift cards and different things and uh, have incentives. And, and I, I don't, it doesn't fit with our flow that well or my, my opinion. And, and uh, I'd rather, we, we only have a certain amount of headspace um, with our patients when they're here. And so the more messages we throw at them, you know, the more 
you kind of have to pick your pick your focus in, uh, in marketing. So that's our philosophy currently, but um, I don't think it's wrong to necessarily do that or have a, you know, put your name in a hat for the free TV of the month or something like that for games. And uh, I don't think there's anything oh. wrong with that. We just have to be cautious how we handle it with our patients. So I, uh, just, just on, oh, sorry. Uh, as I, as, sorry, Evan, uh, let, me, uh, let me cut in there. Um, I think incentivizing staff to be asking is great, but actually we, we generally recommend to our patients to avoid incentivizing patients. Um, we're pretty strong about it. And the reason for that is Google, um, it's against Google terms of service. And if they catch wind of it somehow, they could penalize your website pretty badly uh, in terms of in terms of ranking. So we actually okay. never, never suggest to our clients to actually some of them tell us they do it and they're not going to listen. Fine, you know, we're not going to, but uh, we're not going to tell on you, but it's not our recommendation uh, at all. Um, and, uh, and I actually I, have, okay. yeah, Evan. No, I have a great question in, about reviews. Wanted, so. Okay, so just to chime in real quick. Uh, so if you wanted to kind of dissect the most effective way of getting reviews, it's really, really simple. The first thing is, is volume and asking every patient because it's a numbers game. The more you ask, the more like the more reviews you'll get. Um, it's also about uh, just see, we uh, taking out any negative reviews. So you ask how is everything today when they're checking out. As long as they say something positive, then you have a personal appeal and say something like you know it would mean the world to us if you would just take a minute to leave a quick review on our Google page. And then the next step is really key, which is uh, to make sure that the the message or the the you send them a text message as soon as soon as you've said that while they're still in the practice the likelihood of someone leaving a review once they leave um, it drops down very significantly and so you want to make it as easy as possible you want to make a personal appeal and you want to make sure that you've identified anybody who might leave a bad review Perfect. Um, so we have a question um, along wow. some of these lines, and it's actually a great one, and it touches on a few points that I think are worth mentioning. Um, someone asks, do you have any advice for responding to angry reviews online or correct inaccurate info that is within a review? Um, so I, I think I'll just take a, a quick step that um, it is important to respond to reviews and you don't want to only respond to, to the negative reviews because that will make that show up more prominently because Google sees activity around it and thinks it's more relevant to people. So you do want to respond to all reviews as much as you can, but there's a big caveat there and that's HIPAA compliance. Um, and HIPAA compliance is something that as a company we take very seriously and you never ever it doesn't matter if they initiated it. You never want to delve into the specifics of a patient. You don't want to explicitly acknowledge the treatment that they got, um, that they are a patient. Um, so if, with positive reviews, you know, it's just, you know, thanks for your kind words. Um, with negative reviews, you can speak to their points, but only in a general way. And it, it is important to do that. But, you know, you don't want to get into a war of words um, with people online that never works out for anybody very well. Um, and your response to a negative review is not for the original poster, all right? Uh, it's for other potential patients to know that you take patient concerns seriously. So um, it, you wanna speak to the general points. If they complained about the quality of your eyewear, for example, or insurance, which is the most common one in my experience, um, you know, say, you know, as a practice, we stand by the quality of what we manufacture. Please, you know, reach out to us directly so we can resolve this to your satisfaction. Um, you know, if it's an insurance issue, you know, insurance is a complex issue. Um, we're happy to try to work with you to resolve this. Please reach out to us directly. That That's what you really want to do. Um, we do have, um, I'll share a link uh, at the end here, but we do have uh, actually a bunch of eBooks uh, that are helpful for a lot of these topics. Um, and one of them is on how to respond to Google reviews. Um, effectively and in a way that it's uh, HIPAA compliant. So I'll share that link and uh, anyone who wants to peruse that material, it's obviously a free download. I might chime in one moment there too. Sure. Uh, the, basically gonna say the same thing in a different way, Evan, but I, I agree, you know, and the, the thing that, depending on where our psyche's at as a, as a practice owner, it, these things can make you lose sleep until you, hopefully wrap your head around the fact that you know we we can't hit it 100 percent and and we know that some people are sometimes we drop the ball bigger in dallas right but uh i can say that because i'm in oklahoma as a texas poke but um 
the the other fact is some people are unreasonable and they're never going to be pleased. So to Evan's point, um, just just to that we, we want to respond to everything, and I have somebody cue me up if that happens and personally respond, Dr. Monahir at the end because I, I want. Uh, most people that are looking through the reviews, they just want to know that you're you're uh, working on issues when they pop up, and then that's hopefully in a body of many, many other, uh, you know, five star reviews or four, four and five star reviews. And reasonable people, reasonable people, we want to come into our clinics are going to look at that and see it with reason. So don't lose sleep on it. Yeah. The statistics also show that people will ignore a negative review if there are ten positive reviews. Uh, for every one negative, because they kind of know that they know they're always going to be somebody who who uh, you know is a little bit unreasonable. Unreasonable. So the best the best way to combat a negative review is always going to be just to get more positive reviews. Drown drown it in sunshine, as I always say. <laughs> That's good. Roger, uh, do you have any uh, closing remarks? Uh, we're certainly well, um, open to questions now. Yeah, um, I'm wondering, Dr. Harrell, uh, how much have you enlisted your staff in this pursuit of uh, uh, asking for reviews, monitoring your views? Is it something you're hands-on with, or has your staff been enthusiastic about uh, the process of, uh, of communicating and, and maintaining uh, that relationship with the patients? Uh, great question. I I as we're as we're as we're going through the webinar, I'm, I'm making notes on uh, things I need to go back and revisit because I can. I think we have a lot of room improvement on our staff engagement, and as uh, Svi was mentioning at checkout, ultimately that's the best place to happen. But but currently, what we have going on is I have one person um, at the smaller offices. It's at checkout. At, at our larger uh, main office, it's a, a marketing person who's doing it. Uh, sending out the uh, reviews apps and um, and also she monitors it for all the locations so she will respond to all the the positive reviews um, kind of like Evan was saying thanks for your comments we appreciate it love our patients whatever and um, and then uh, any negative thing that comes in she'll uh, she'll run that by me to help craft a response for that excellent Evan I have a question that just came in. Uh, that's a, there's a lot to talk about there. What's the name of our review app? Um, so we have a um, a marketing app that manages all kinds of uh, aspects of your website, of your marketing, from automating your social media to uh, seeing how you're showing up on different searches to updating staff or designer frames or something like that. That's called Get Set Pro, and then. In Get Set Pro, there's Get Set Scheduler and Get Set Marketing, Get Set Website, and Get Set Reviews. So that's the name. It's not an app that's on the App Store. It's a uh, it's an it's a web-based app that we uh, we use for all of our uh, practices that are on the marketing package to help them manage all aspects of their online marketing in conjunction with working with uh, one person like Tzvi or another marketing manager who will be meeting with the practice on a monthly basis and working with them one-on-one -on, -one on implementing different strategies and giving them guidance. So uh, if anybody would like more information, I'm happy to, you know, follow up with them or, uh, you know, and go through and, sh and show them how we do it. Um, but yeah. Great. Um, any more questions that have come in, uh, Evan or Svi? Uh, some people are wondering if uh, they came in late and they're just wondering if there will be uh, a replay. Um, and uh, yep, shortly uh, within a couple of days, um, I'll send an email out to uh, to everyone uh, whether they could make it or not. If they're interested in a recap, so they can certainly watch the video uh, online. We'll set up a landing page for that. Great. Why, well, um, if uh, that's it for the questions right now, we, we want to thank our presenters, Evan Engel of Eye Care Pro and Dr. Monty Harrell of Harrell Eye Care in Tulsa, Oklahoma. As uh, Evan, you just mentioned why today's webinar will be archived and uh, listeners will, or, or any registrants will receive an email in coming days with a link to the archive, which will be on the eyecarepro.net website. 
Um, as well, um, uh, iCare Pro has provided a number of ebooks on enhancing your digital presence, also available on the website. A short survey will follow at the close of our program, and we appreciate your participation so we can continue to serve your informational needs and other upcoming webinars from iCare Pro. And finally, we thank you for listening and posing such excellent questions on how to prioritize your digital marketing to maximize results. Thank you and good day.